So this state of all the accounts, it's split into multiple subsets, right? Into, into multiple sets. So uh, today we split by, by name, right? So there would be a contiguous set of accounts uh, that lives on shard one. And there is a contiguous set of accounts that lives on shard two. Uh, and that those boundaries are not, they not immutable through the, through the life of the blockchain. And as a matter of fact, they did change multiple times. So near launch, it was a single set. Near launch to the single shard, right? And then it was split into four. And then in the recent months, it was split. Two of them were split multi uh, twice into two again. So it's, uh, and in the future, that will be dynamic. In the future, the system will be changing the, the boundaries as the, you know, like as the load changes automatically. So, I mean, maybe one way to imagine it is like um, in your, like, in the postal system in your city, most likely, like your city is kind of like divided into these different regions, each with a different postal code, right? Where I live, they are called yeah PLZs or something like that. And so each kind of like region of the city will have will have a number, and the city will be partitioned into various different postal codes, and you'll have like a post office in every every code essentially. And you can imagine like in near, it's it's taking that data structure you can think of that as the city and then breaking it down into like these these areas these shards and the dynamism is like if you have like a region in the city that has a postal code and suddenly lots of letters are being sent there and they're like oh now actually we need two post offices then maybe they will divide the region in the city into into two different regions with two different post offices with two different numbers and in practice that does happen right like postal codes change over over long horizons and near similarly like okay the whole blockchain is broken down into like these shards and the definition of a shard can also change in order to kind of route around uh, the capacity to compare with this with other approaches like subnet rollups etc I mean, in a way, they're trying to emulate the same behavior, right? It's like, oh, you know, this this rollup is too busy. Instead of launching there, you know, you can spin up a new rollup, and uh, now everybody can go there and you have more capacity. But it's a very, you know, not just manual and extensive process, right? I mean, like each rollup, you know, cost is uh, at least a million dollars a year just to run between sequencer, explorers, RPCs, etc. All the infrastructure. But it's also now every user, every developer, every smart contract that was actually trying to use it now needs to figure out how to go there, how to bridge there, how, what gas tokens is used there, et cetera. Right? So it's, it's a huge load on the whole kind of understanding of the network across this, which we are actually addressing with chain, kind of chain abstraction and chain signatures as well, because we do believe this is kind of a unit, like what we're trying to do with near is a universal problem, right? It's like the capabilities of the network should be able to change dynamically and everybody should be able to route things uh, without thinking about the underlying infrastructure. But on near, we kind of solved it in a very like direct way by having this kind of namespace that is common for everyone and using that to route uh, kind of transactions and messages, mail, uh, between between different participants. Yeah, that is so cool. I actually I actually own Meher dot near and and yeah, I've never needed to think about what chart it is on, right? So to me, I own I only need Meher dot near and its journey through time. Maybe like it was processed in chart number one, then chart number three, and then it's changing, and I never need to know about it. Right, like that's 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 like really. Yeah, I think it it wasn't shard. Yeah, shard zero, then shard two, and then shard three. Now it's on probably shard three right now. But yeah, you don't you definitely don't need to know about that. And like even I have like, you know, there is a way to look it up, but we actually don't show it in Explorer usually because I mean some new explorers show sometimes, but because we don't actually want people to know because it's it's a irrelevant information. It's like knowing which which exact computer in on which rack in AWS is, you know, providing us with this interface we're looking at right 